On the inaugural episode of Around the Wicket, we start our ICC Men's T20 World Cup Trophy Tour in Scotland and England as we catch up with Kyle Coatser. 124, he keeps tossing them up at the moment. And Graeme Swan. He was always an aggressive batsman, Kyle Coates, at the top of the order, I tell you. This doesn't surprise me. We asked them the questions sent by fans from around the world and also put them head to head in the counted Book Cricket Championship. Yeah, you heard it right. You don't want to miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Around the Wicket, your official ICC Men's T20 World Cup Trophy Tour show driven by the wonderful folks at Nissan. I'm your host, my name is Danish Seth. On this show, we drive around in our virtual Nissan and visit two participating countries from the 2021 Men's T20 World Cup. Every episode, of course, and we'll do it through video calls because, you know, traveling is difficult. So we'll just speak to their representatives in this virtual environment. We ask them the questions sent by cricket fans like you from around the world and also put them head to head in a couple of grueling contests. So what if you can't come to the trophy? The trophy tour itself will come to you. With that out of the way, let's introduce our first guest, shall we? Mm, Scottish cricketing royalty, Kyle Coatser. Scotland's Kyle Coatser is ICC Associate Player of the Decade. He has been a pioneer for Scotland cricket and is the highest run scorer in the limited overs format for his nation. His most notable performance in Scottish colours came against Bangladesh in the 2015 ICC Men's World Cup. He became a viral sensation after his ridiculous catch at the ICC T20 World Cup 2009, which was lauded as the best catch you'll ever see by David Bumble Lloyd. Though he goes by the name of Mere Goose on social media, it's Scotland's national animal that describes him best. In Scottish cricket, the man's a unicorn. In today's show, Kyle will tell us how it feels to be the perpetual captain of the Scotland national team and if he chose cricket just because he was terrible at football. Firstly, Kyle, welcome to Around the Wicket. Uh, thanks for taking the time out to talk to us. Okay, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure. So we want to begin by asking you, big, bold, beautiful, one of those adjectives that describes you the best. I'm, I'm going to say bold just because I meant to, I meant to have strong, uh, decisive answers and decisions when I'm on the field. So I'm going to stick to bold. Um, how's the preparation for the World Cup been coming along? Any COVID related restrictions? Um, the guys are doing everything they can. You know, we've been in small bubbles, trying to make sure uh, COVID doesn't spread amongst us and um, we've done everything possible really. Um, apart from you, you said there are some really destructive players. Who would you say is the player to watch out for in the Scottish team? Being a captain, I'm not going to name one player because I expect them all to play very well. But if you look through the, the list of players that um, that will come to the World Cup, you'll see some exciting names. All right, Captain, I'm going to let you have that, all right? Uh, the next one is, uh, you know, of all the associate nations, you're considered as one of the very best players. Uh, was winning the ICC Associate Player of the Decade your greatest achievement? Yeah, it was a, a huge, huge honour, to be honest, to, to, for that to come out and, and be announced and be alongside uh, fellow Scott Richard Barrington and uh, Catherine Bryce. I think Sarah Bryce might have been on there as well. And to have those uh, a number of Scots on on the uh, on the list there was pr very special. And uh, you produced one of the most memorable moments of the T20 World Cup history. That catch against South Africa in 2009 was incredible. Twelve years later, Kyle, we need an answer. Was that a fluke? Well, you, you tell me, are you meant to stay on the line or not? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I'd maybe crept a few 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 uh, meters off further off the line than I was meant to be, and all of a sudden there we go. The ball's appearing above my head and I had to stick an arm up. So there there was an element of fluke there, but I would say I'd maybe caught enough cricket balls in my time to hope that I would catch that one, but there was certainly a bit of luck in there. Alright, there you go. You have that question answered. Now, Kyle, we're going to move on to our next segment. Alright, and this one's called Questions I'd Never Ask. I want you to hear me carefully. Questions I'd Never Ask. 
but they're there i am here you're here so well i'm just going to do my job but these are questions i'd never ask all right okay, okay. let's begin stats tell us you've been the captain of the scottish cricket team practically since you were born will you ever give somebody else a chance <laughs> I don't know. Someone keeps asking me to be captain. That's the problem. Uh, maybe one day it will it will come around. So someone's going to have to take it on on in, so, at some in some capacities fairly soon. I imagine. Uh, the Scottish football team couldn't make it past the first round in the Euros. Uh, will the Scottish cricket team make up for that? Of course we will. Yes. Have you ever fantasized playing cricket in a kilt? Uh, no is a simple answer, but I tell you what, I got refitted for my kilt literally yesterday, so I picked it up. So maybe that's one thing that I'll think about in the future. I'll get my pads on and I'll start running around in my kilt. Um, who would you say is the most famous Scot in world cricket? I got to say someone who I idolised a bit when I was younger, probably Gavin Hamilton. All right, I mean the answer I was looking for is Scotch Tyrus, but fair enough. I'll, I'll let you have that. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll fall straight into that trap. <laughs> <laughs> well done, you walked right into it. Your social media username is the mere goose, and Scotland's national animal is the unicorn. Um, I asked this politely. What is wrong with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Not a clue. We're just Scottish. That's a problem. Not a clue. <laughs> uh, this is fun. All right, the segment is called questions I'd never ask, and now I'm just going to parrot questions that have come to me from the fans. These are fan-powered questions. Um, this one's come on Instagram for you, Kyle, uh, from We Sampath Kumar. He asks, "What will be your game plan for the T20 World Cup?" Oh, you expect us to give out our secrets now on on here? <laughs> now we, we we intend to to go out and play as boldly as we can and confidently as we can when we're out there. So some exciting cricket. Yeah. Um, some expressive cricket yeah. with the bat ball and in the field. Uh, Dhanwant uh, is uh, very Indian. He sets a benchmark in his question and he wants an answer as well. He says, do you think Scotland can top their group and how much further can they go in the tournament? I, I strongly believe that we can we can top our group. It, it won't be plain sailing, that's for sure. Some, uh, every team is, is very dangerous within that group. But we've, we've, uh, Played every team there, and we've lost to every team too. But we've also we've also beaten every team in that group, so we know that we're capable of it. Yeah. The next one is from I am Aditya one six eight underscore. He says, "Who is the most underrated cricketer right now?" I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how I'm going to answer this. I would say associate cricket is the most underrated cricket. Yeah. In in the world right now. Samish Santosh one asks, "What is your favorite?" Shot in cricket and the favorite innings you have played. In my old age, I've learned to take it take it over the leg side a little bit more. So, All right. um, but a, a big traditionalist, I would like to say, shot through the covers. Front Quality. Front. Awesome. And uh, Andrew Gamer Z9 asks, what is the most memorable match you've ever seen in cricket? Um, but our game versus England a couple of years ago. Uh, where we had 371 and England fell six runs short of the game. So that was that was a fantastic game, and um, the, apparently the noise could be hear, heard for miles around the ground. Incredible! All right, Satyadev Segal on Facebook has sent in this question: Who is your favourite batsman? There was two of them. One was a guy called Jacques Callis, playing for South Africa. So we'd only ever get to watch. England and whoever they were playing against on the local TV when I was a youngster. So it would be England. Uh, so the English bats and I used to love was Michael Atherton. That was Kyle Coatser. What a man. Well, he's off to practice his book cricket skills for now because he has a big game coming up against the guest I'm going to be introducing you to now. Who is it? Well, the former number one ODI and Test Bowler of the Year, England's Graham Swan. Graham Swan is a former ICC number one ODI bowler and an off-spin legend. He was a part of England's first ever victory at the ICC Men's T20 World Cup in 2010, where he was his team's leading wicket taker with some special spells, including his tournament best figures of 3 for 24 coming against South Africa. This is in the air, this should be out, should be catching practice. And Michael Long takes an elementary catch. 
He was also a part of the Ashes winning sides in 2009 and 2010-11. Over the course of today's show, we will get insights into Swanee's rock band, its popularity in Japan, and also get to understand why Swanee's autobiography has a rating of only 3.6 on Goodreads. I've messed up my hair now doing that. Come on, then, let's no, go. you're looking good. You're looking good. You look. You're looking good. In fact, the first question is about that, right? Big, bold, beautiful. Out of these three adjectives, which one fits you the best? Many would say big, big-headed, um, but I would say beautiful because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And sometimes I look in the mirror. <laughs> but, and, all right. For those watching, that is narcissism 101. No, no, narcissism 101 would be I look in the mirror and I love it, and everyone else should love it too. Uh, you have the best economy rate in T20Is of all English players and you retired in 2013. Is there anyone in the current team capable of beating a record? No. Nope. That's very humble of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why that is. The T20 game has moved on so much. Yeah. And the standard of batsmanship and the power of the players has moved on. I got lucky I played, what, 10, 15 years ago when T20 yeah. was still a format that was being learned. It hadn't really been developed in the minds of the batsmen, but now they've really got it down pat. <laughs> All right. Uh, Grin, the flying saucer ball, how and when did you come up with it? And speaking of flying saucers, do you believe in aliens? Uh, I do believe in aliens, and I'm pretty sure I played against one or two aliens in my time. I'm naming no names. Um, but the, the flying saucer ball, it was basically, it's, it's another name for a square spinner. It was called Ashley Mallet taught me it. So what do you call it? And I went, I don't know, it wibbly wobbles like the flying saucer. I'd call it a flying saucer. So it was off the cuff. So Graham, who do you think will win the World Cup this this time around? Now, I'm gonna th this might not go down too well in India. If it had been in India, yeah. I think India would have been firm favourites to win. Okay. But the fact that it's in the UAE, yeah. I think, this makes the West Indies the favourites to win, in my view. All right, on that note, Graham, we're going to move on to our next segment, which is called Questions I'd Never Ask. Uh, now, these are questions I'd never ask, right? But since I'm here, yes. you're here, I'm just going to... But you're feeling brave and I'm a nice guy, so ask away. Yeah, I'm just going to like shoot them at you. You participated in a show called Strictly Come Dancing. Did you learn the moves by watching batsmen dancing down the track to hit you for sixes? That didn't happen very often. That's a nasty question. Are you trying to hurt my feelings? <laughs> the the segment's got um, questions that never asked, right? <laughs> no, um, yeah. I, I, I always did quite well. I didn't get hit for that many sixes until the back end of my career when I couldn't feel my hand anymore. <laughs> uh, because most batsmen, believe it or not, even the best batsmen in the world, yeah. give you little telltale signs that they're about to dance down the wicket. Very few players who are ever bowled at didn't let you know that they were coming. Michael Clark was a very good at coming down the wicket. But most of the others, no matter how good, gave you some sort of tell. Whether it's their eyes dilating, whether it's their shoulder dropping, there's always a sign, spin bowlers, always a sign. Very cool. Now, you're the lead singer of a rock band and not too many people outside Nottingham know it. I think it's a good thing. What are your thoughts? <laughs> Dr. Comfort and the Lurid That's Revelations. Right. We're huge in Japan. <laughs> Honestly, if I hadn't been an uh, international cricketer, I would have been either a rock star or a fighter pilot. I'm pretty sure of this. I like how you just threw in Japan. I mean, <laughs> there's no way we can confirm that. Yeah, exactly. So just take my word for it. Big in Japan. <laughs> All right. Uh, you get the fans very excited with your commentary. Did it ever cross your mind that you could do the same thing with your bowling too? Well, talk about it rather than do it. I don't know. <laughs> I love I love commentating because I can get my my real personality across. I always felt when I was bowling, when I was playing, you have to be quite serious. Um, and I was quite an angry bowler as well. If people misfilled it off me, I got very het up. Yeah. But as a commentator, you could just enjoy it. And I love it. You know, our next segment is called Fan Powered Questions. Tanmay Chakrabarti on Twitter has asked, who is your pick for the highest run scorer and highest wicket taker in the T20 World Cup? Oh. Uh, run scorer, I think Nicholas Poran has got a chance. Brilliant player. Uh, wicket taker. And I'm going to go Jasprit Bumrah. W will Joe Root be a part of the England squad for the T20 World Cup? Rahul wants to know. No, I don't think he will. Joe's a brilliant player. We've seen that especially in test yeah. cricket, but I don't think he's going to be in the T20. All right. Uh, on Facebook, there's a question from uh, Tabish Abakshi. 
He wants to know what is your favorite memory from the 2010 T20 World Cup. My favorite memory is um, it's just sprinting onto the field um, as we won that as we won that game. But I remember waiting on the boundary with all my teammates, and I'm not the quickest runner, but I was first out to the middle. It was a brilliant feeling. All right, uh, we've got some questions on uh, Instagram as well. Your prediction for player of the tournament in the T20 World Cup? Player of the tournament, I think, will be Virat Kohli. He's the best current player in the one day in the white ball form. Hassan Faisal asks, who is the best batsman you've bowled to and who was your inspiration to get into cricket? Uh, my inspiration to get into cricket was my dad and my brother because they both played. The best player I ever bowled at was Brian Lara. I bowled at Brian Lara once and he was in the peak of his powers and he was in top form as well. He was almost impossible. Thank you, Graham. This was beautiful. Thank you. I enjoyed that. All right, gentlemen, this is the game of your lives. The iconic rivalry, England versus Scotland in the most coveted trophy in the world of cricket, the Book Cricket Championship. Graham, yours is rated 3.6 out of 5 on Goodreads. Uh, no, I didn't write it myself. It was written for me. It was ghostwritten. So, it, you know what? When you actually have a book, I went to the publishers said that I'm quite good at writing. I've, I've published a few things. Can I write it? They looked me straight in the eyes and said no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll still put that book to some use, right? What we're going to do now is we're going to be playing some book cricket. Now, each player flips open the book six times, playing an over. The last digit of the even numbered page that you flip is the number of runs you score. Zero is a dot ball. You get two, four, six, and eight. These are the runs, right? I'm going to be the scorer. Yeah. So let's begin with a little... Like this guy. Kyle's going first? Yeah, Kyle's going first. Yeah, I'll go. All right, Kyle, let's start. Hold the book up, be fair. All right, let's go. Flip it open. What's the first number that you see? True, it's got for four. 84. So you get four of the first ball. Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scotland in the lead already. So good looking, it's four. 124, he keeps tossing them up at the moment. Four again. It's four, he's batting well. He is. Not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the number there? Oh, this is a bad over, 58. That is a oh, baby. wow, it's out of eight. Here. Oh, he's got an eight. Well done. Oh, I've got an eight. Oh, great. I'm, I'm in the game, I'm back. It's through, it's right. got for four. 64. I played, sir. Four again. He was, always, he was always an aggressive batsman, Carl Kurtz, at the top of the order, I tell you. This doesn't surprise me. <laughs> What's the number you have there? Six. That's gone and done the distance. Six. It's a six. <laughs> All right, two more balls. Kyle, go for it. Go on then. What is it? 84. Four again. All right. Four. So good four. looking, it's four. four. All right, the last ball. Oh, 64. It's been a big over, this. A, uh, sorry, this is the problem. everywhere. Can I win? So you need 10 runs of this ball technically. So I don't think it's possible, but still go for it. What is it? Now oh, pick up the comfortable two. Two, two and oh. ladies and gentlemen, the winner of this book cricket championship to begin with is Scotland. Well done, Kyle. Congratulations. game is called the super over yeah. all right it's uh, only fitting for the last thing we do in this episode right we're going to a super over the rules are simple i give you one topic and you have to go back and forth with answers to the question until someone fails to respond in 5 seconds so the topic for today is bald cricket personalities we'll start with you graham throw in your first name Doug Bollinger <laughs> Uh, Nixon, Bill Nixon. Carl Kurtzer. <laughs> My hero, Darren Stevens. Stuart Broad. He's not no bald, is he? Um, 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 Verenda Slaywag. Ah, oh, who's the guy? <laughs> Lester, I can't remember him. I'm out, I'm out. Uh, congratulations, uh, Graham, you won this one. Kyle, you should have said your own name. I thought I couldn't repeat, but I'll give him that. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us. And uh, congratulations, Fawny, for winning one competition. Kyle, thanks for winning the other and for answering our questions. It was great talking to both of you. Thank you. Nice to see you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And
and that is that for the first episode of Around the Wicket. Thank you so much for sticking around with us till the very end. We're going to continue to stay in Europe because the weather is beautiful. The next episode features Ireland and Netherlands. And if you'd like to ask our guests questions, get involved on ICC's social media platforms. Our trophy tour has only just gotten started and there are so many more people to meet. I'm super excited, so stay tuned. I've been your host, my name is Danish Seth, and I'll see you in the next episode.